Hi, my name is Kenny Miller and today I'm going to take a look at how you can use your iPhone with any of the Picoscope 2000 series USB oscilloscopes. Okay, so let's take a look at what you'll need. First of all, you'll, you'll need an iPhone or iPod Touch running version 3.0 or later of the operating system. You'll need an oscilloscope uh, 2000 series from Picoscope and you'll need a Windows based machine to act as the USB host. The first thing to do is to make sure that your oscilloscope is working correctly um, and you can do that by downloading the free Picoscope software from the Picotech website and you'll probably already have that if you're already using these Picoscope USB oscilloscopes. I'm running Picoscope version 6 and as you can see communicating no problem with the scope. We'll close that for just now. We don't need PicoScope anymore. What you will need is a small piece of software called PScope Host, which forms a bridge between the USB port on the Windows machine and the Wi-Fi or cellular data connection on your iPhone. You can download PScope Host from www.kennymiller.co.uk and that's a free download. Once you've connected your uh, scope to your computer, Simply fire up Pscope host and from this point on we don't need the Windows based machine anymore. For your mobile device you'll need to go to the App Store and download Pscope. When you launch Pscope you immediately see the oscilloscope view. The first thing you need to do is hit the configuration button and type in the IP address or name of the Windows computer that's running the host. Don't change the port number, the default of 4010 should be fine for most applications. Once you've entered the IP address, you can use the A and B buttons to set up the A and B channels on your oscilloscope device. On the A channel, you have all the usual settings. You have the voltage range, which is your Y axis on the oscilloscope view, you have your, voltage, your time division which is your X axis on the oscilloscope view, it's all fairly standard stuff and you'll be completely familiar with this if you've ever used an oscilloscope. And you have three trigger modes with no trigger which just shows the live data from the scope, a single trigger which carries a single which captures a single snapshot of data from the scope and a repeat trigger which continually re-triggers the scope you can set the trigger to be on the rising or falling edge of the voltage uh, captured and you can set the trigger level and the trigger level ranges from 0 to 100% uh, of the range that you've set above. Again you'll be familiar with this if you've ever used Picoscope uh, and Picoscope software you can also set the pre-trigger amount, which is the amount of data the scope will capture prior to the trigger event. Let's set this for plus and minus 5 volts, we'll set it for 10 milliseconds per division and we'll have no triggering for just now. On channel B, you can enable or disable the channel, set the AC coupling on or off and set the vertical resolution. If the oscilloscope you're using is one of the single channel devices like the 2104, 2105 handheld scope, then a the channel B will automatically be disabled and all its options greyed out. Okay, so to begin a scope measurement, we've set the host settings, we've set the oscilloscope ranges, we just hit go. And the values measured from the scope automatically appear here. In this case, I have my oscilloscope connected to this little microchip pick test board uh, on which I have a little photo detector which is used for detecting infrared signals. So say we wanted to capture the waveform from this um, remote device I could simply push the button and you'll see that the, the waveform whizzes past on the display as you would expect. Now if we wanted to capture that waveform we could set a trigger, so we'll set a trigger on channel A uh, I'll set it for a single shot trigger on the falling edge 
and we'll set it to capture as it falls past 1.5 volts. Then we click go. On the screen you'll see this little diamond shape which shows the trigger level and also uh, how much data will be captured pre-trigger. This can be adjusted as we've seen before with the tree trigger level and the trigger level. So we'll set it for 1.5 volts and with a quite a small pre-trigger amount, 6% in this case. And then we'll capture a signal. And there you have it. It's triggered on the falling edge. It's captured 6% of pre-data and the rest of the scope captures the data that followed. And that is pretty much it. It's a very simple application, but its uses are limited only by your imagination. I find it really useful when I have my P PC connected to the oscilloscope, but I'm also trying to step through some source code and debug a circuit using embedded source, and there's not enough real estate on the PC screen to see my source code, a debugger, and an oscilloscope trace all at the same time. I can simply prop my phone up beside the, beside the uh, PC, and use that as a remote screen for my oscilloscope. You could in fact also use it for remote support um, where the device in test is in one location and your iPhone with the P-Scope software on is in a completely different location because it connects over Wi-Fi or cellular data. One final nice little touch is the ability to measure values on the screen. You simply touch anywhere on the screen and you'll see the crosshairs appear and the crosshairs will give you the reading of the voltage range and also the time at the point where you're touching. So you can see here that this is approximately 3.3 .3 volts and it runs from 6.5 milliseconds to 70 milliseconds so it's approximately I don't know, 64 milliseconds long that series of pulses. Well, good luck. I hope you enjoyed this little presentation. Um, remember, you can download the P-Scope application for your iPhone from the App Store, and you'll also need the P-Scope host application, which you can get from www.kennymiller.co.uk. Thanks again.